Wonderful, Vicky Thornley. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy training schedule to talk to us and, and all the readers that hear the, hear the boat sing. Tell me, what is it like being off the water? Um, yeah, it's very different, um, as it is for everybody uh, in, you know, around the world right now. Our kind of usual um, day-to-day training has changed. Obviously, we're not on the water. I'm um, doing all my training at home um, and all of it land-based, so either on the uh, ergo or weights or cycling, um, a bit of running. So it's kind of nice, there's a bit of variety in it, um, but obviously missing being out in the water, especially as the weather's been incredible in the UK um, the last couple of weeks, which is um, unusual. Um, and I went for a run down the river on Sunday and the water was like mirror flat, the sun was shining, and I was like, perfect day for a skull, but... Uh, not to be. It is, it is really perfect weather in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful at the moment, which is making the whole thing like a lot better. I think if it was raining outside and stuff, I think people's, it would be difficult to keep people's spirits up, so the weather's definitely helping. Well, I must say that your sharing some of your training uh, on social media has actually done a lot for a lot of people, and please don't underestimate the enormous benefit it has to people's well-being to see elite athletes like yourself taking the time to share some of their training. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping if it helps a few people, then um, that's kind of the, the aim of it, really, because I know it's difficult to motivate yourself to train when you're on your own and you're not in your club environment or whatever. So um, if it's just helping people keeping their training ticking along. That's that's absolutely the, the idea behind it. And also to have a little bit of company myself, even if it's via Instagram. <laughs> so tell me, what is it that you miss most about not being on the water? Um, obviously we row to be on the water, um, you know, and the ergo is sometimes a necessary evil to make you fast on the, on the water. So just that feeling of being out and the freedom that you get from being, um, in the boat, I really miss, um, and just working like with the team around me as well. So obviously I'm in contact with my coach and my support, the, like the, the GB support team. Um, but that's just, you know, it's via the, the internet or via a phone call it's not really the same as that day-to-day just little conversations you have here and there that kind of make the days you, you learn more every day just by those little conversations you have and you don't have them the same uh in these situations so i'm missing that kind of interaction with um my coach and my and the support team but also the team around me the athletes so um obviously a lot of the time i spend in the boat on my own um but around me is a massive team obviously the British team is a huge team so um, I'm used to having those people around me rowing past me on the lake giving me some banter or whatever um, and then in the crew room you know between sessions just having that banter between athletes and just you know the kind of usual camaraderie that you know as rowers take up the sport really for. So scholars really do actually like training with other people? Yeah I mean I'm a scholar single scholar now but I've Challenge of the single, um, so I feel like I'm lucky that I've gone through that. Kind of, I've been through to the biggest boat and then to a smaller boat and now to the smallest boat, and having that kind of spread up amongst the, um, the different team sizes I've worked with has been really insightful and shows how actually rowing and the different boat types just take so much, um, they take very different kind of qualities. You need different um, strengths, and there's, you know, there's parts of it in a team environment. You've to really work with other people and understand how your behavior comes across to others um and then but in an eight that's kind of um, dissipated a bit because it's in such a big group but then in a double it's obviously very concentrated you spend a lot of time with one other person and the coach and, and then obviously in the single there's no one else in the boat with you but your um relationship with the coach is a lot closer because it's you know it's only them that's giving you feedback so it's very different and i love learning about the different boat types because it's because of that experience I've had. The double is an amazing boat because you really do feel the other person through the water, don't you? It's, it's an incredible boat. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's probably one of my favourite boats because you have a lot of influence over it um, because it's only, there's only two of you in the boat. Um, but also the seats are very different. So I've rode in the stroke seat and, and the bow seat and raced in both seats and they're very different. They feel very different than the jobs um, that you need to do in each seat are very different. 
Um, so it's a boat that you have a lot of feeling in, but it's also quite quick. So uh, obviously in the single you have all the feel and it's just you, but in the double it's quite a lot markedly quicker. So um, it runs really nicely and you know, when it goes well, you get a really nice feeling of runoff and finish. And so I do, yeah, I really like um, the double. And when it comes to the ergometer, uh, is, is your answer enjoy or endure? Enjoy and at, at points, of course, sometimes it's very much enjoy because some days you get off on and your legs feel heavy, and there's no way of rowing it better like the boat to make it feel any better. It's just going to be like this session is going to be hard, and for 20k, my legs are going to hurt. And then there's other days you get on and you feel like, oh, I feel awesome, and 20k goes by in a breeze, and the numbers are good, and you feel great. And that's just the nature of training, that's the nature of definitely the ergo. Um, but you have to try and find enjoyment in it because. Otherwise, it would be pretty, um, <laughs> be pretty miserable. So, you know, there's obviously ups and downs, and you have definitely a love-hate relationship with it. But at the moment, I'm trying to um, enjoy the sessions that feel good, and then just deal and get on with the sessions that don't feel so good. And sometimes you can get on the ergometer and actually not think you're going to have a very good session, and somehow just something kicks in and, and you get off at the end of the session, and you say, wow, that was pretty fantastic. Absolutely, it's definitely a case. I often find that with like the half hour rate twenty sessions that we do. They're often we do them on a Wednesday, uh, second session, and they're definitely sometimes you can feel like you got on your knees and then you get off and it goes really well and you pull close to your PB and you pull PB and then the other days you think, oh, I feel all right. And you're on for it. You feel like you're going to be on for a good one, and then the opposite happens. So that's definitely a session where sometimes you're just not sure what's going to happen until you're five minutes in, and then you're like, okay. This is going to be horrendous. The scores aren't great, or I'm on for a good one. Let's see what see what I can do, kind of thing. So yeah, absolutely, it can um, sometimes your body can surprise you. Now, when you're on the ergometer, are you one of these people? If you're on for thirty minutes, are you looking at the numbers on the screen, or are you listening to music? Which which one is it? Because you know, ergometer people fall into two camps. Um, no, both. Um, today, when I did my live Instagram workout, I didn't have. Mainly because I was doing it in my garden, and it was eight o'clock in the morning. I don't think my neighbours would have appreciated me putting the tunes on, and I had my headset in to like to speak a little bit about my session to um, who was following. But um, normally I do play music, um, just it's nice to pass the time. And, um, but I also want to concentrate on the on the numbers. But the number, you know, on a UC two study session, um, it's you know the numbers are that you know they're kind of there, and it's just about being and holding on to form as you get tired. Um, but yeah, definitely like listening to playlists and trying to find out some more playlists and things now to keep it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously you were headed for the Olympics. Obviously you're training on. So for the record, are you aiming for Tokyo next year? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Fantastic, because I know our readers would really like to know that and to hear it from the horse's mouth is is absolutely fantastic and many of your fans will be thrilled that you are training on how disruptive is it you know you obviously had a countdown every athlete when they're headed for elite competition says you know i'm six months out i'm three months out i'm two months out how disruptive was it to reset that whole that whole calendar yeah i think um it's more in your mind i reckon um in terms of how the program works. I put the trust in Jürgen Grobler, who's our, who's our chief coach, he'll write the program to um, make sure that we arrive in July 2021 in the best shape possible. Um, mentally, yes, we've got to adapt and reassess. Um, and now it's going to be difficult to maintain momentum and motivation. Now we haven't got anything to race this year. So go through a whole season of just basically training. Like Roe has spent a lot of time training and not much time racing anyway in a normal season. And this season is just training, no racing. There's obviously we're obviously going to have pieces within our program um, and things that's aimed towards, but it's not the same as obviously lining up against five other people and racing side by side. So um, it's I think the first part part is getting through this season um, and making sure we get good training in and um, maintaining like motivation and momentum through this, and then obviously. Have, we'll have a, a short break like we normally do and then start up the Olympic year for a second time. Um, so I think it's sectioning it into two two parts, finishing this season in the way that we want and then 
starting up the next one. And yeah, it's difficult because it's a big kind of change. Um, but you just have to reassess. It's just it's the right decision, um, and it's just kind of the way the dice has been rolled this time. And you know, everybody around the world in whatever sport or profession, they you know they're having to compromise and change their plans. Um, and that's just we're just a small part of that. So, uh, but in the bigger picture, it, you know, it is only sport, and as long as we we stay healthy and all that, that's the priority at the end of the day. Now you had a famous silver medal Olympic partnership with Kath Granger. What was the funniest incident? I mean, everybody who trains with somebody has a funny incident. What was the funniest incident you've had with Kath in a boat? Or out of a boat? Um, the funniest? Uh, I'm not sure, if, I, don't, I don't know about a funny, I can't remember about a funny one at the time. Uh, I guess actually, um, in the race, we're in the race just for the Olympics, and uh, we've gone out and the weather was quite nice. And if anyone knows the Brazy Lake, Italy, it can be quite um, up and down in terms of the conditions. And whilst we were out on the lake, all of a sudden the wind just totally blew up. Um, it's when the water turns like a green colour, and you, that's the time when you're like, right, we need to get in because it's about to kick off. Uh, and when the wind build, builds up there, the water gets really rough. Um, and we were just like sinking, and we were still like a pain or to get back. And I just remember there being a lot of water coming into the boat. I'm not sure we'd be able to get in or not. Um, we got there, we managed to get on boat quite easily. But then the women's aid um, were on the landing stage, and the boat was literally nearly getting hooked onto the landing stage. They were really struggling to get their boat, um, their boat out. So it was uh, an interesting experience. We managed to get off. We were all okay, but. Yeah, that was a good standout session just before, before the Olympic Games. Um, but in terms of funny, I can't really think of one. I remember what stood out in particular was the um, race uh, in Lucerne where I um, started a, we start, we started about 10 strokes and I caught boats off Big Crab, um, which wasn't ideal. It was my first season with Catherine and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to double with Catherine Brady and I just caught boats off Big Crab and going final in Lucerne, not ideal. At the time, I was obviously mortified and very, very upset, but now I can look back at it with a bit of a, oh dear, that wasn't ideal. No, well, these things do happen, don't they? They do, yeah, yeah. Even when you're, um, at, you know, when you'd like to think at your, your best, you can still um, make mistakes like that. Yes. Now, look, we've had a wonderful interview, and I know we could go on much longer, but we want to keep the format nice and tight. Um, can I just say, again, thank you on behalf of everybody who enjoys your sharing, your training, and can you, would you kindly sign off with a greeting for all the people out there who, like you, wish they could be in boats but are having to sit on ergometers instead? Yeah, um, no, um, I'm totally there with you. Uh, I'm doing a lot of my training on the ergo, and it is tough going, but definitely when we get back in the boat, we'll be stronger for it because it's nothing like the ergo to make you fit and strong. So keep remembering that, um, we will come out of this soon and we will be back on the water feeling that um, amazing feel, feeling we do get from the boat um, and we'll be fitter and stronger and therefore the boat will sink even more. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you very much. Now Vicky, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll um, just stop my recording there.